Hey everybody, this is Dr. Patricia Kalanicki back with another EdTPA video for secondary mathematics. This one specifically talking about the context for learning. All right, so the purpose of this document first is to give the evaluator of your EdTPA some background knowledge about your classroom, um, like the demographics of your students, information about the school and the community, um, demonstrates your knowledge of key factors that may impact your instruction. Um, what kinds of students do you have? Do you have a lot of English language learners? Do you have a lot of students with disabilities? Is there a high rate of poverty in your district? Um, what kinds of resources does your school or community have? Those are some questions that will be in your context for learning. Final thing is for you to demonstrate your ability to plan for a variety of students with special learning needs. This is a skill and this is something that EdTPA is looking for. These students will be in your classroom and you do need to prepare well for them. Okay, so let's start looking at this document. Um, question one is pretty self-explanatory. The only reason you would use other would be if your school doesn't really fit into a typical middle school, which in New York would be sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, or a high school model, which is like ninth through twelfth. Um, there are some high schools on Long Island that are seven through twelve. That would be the other category. Um, number two, where is your school located? Again, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm going to speak particularly about Long Island because that's where I teach uh, university, uh, both my elementary and secondary math educators. Uh, typically all Long Island districts are suburban, but there are a few city districts, and I know you wouldn't believe me, but something like Glen Cove and Long Beach are actually city districts. It's Long Beach City Schools, I know, right? Number three, list any specific features of your school or classroom setting. This should be information about the demographics of your, of your school, um, the percentage of students that receive free and reduced lunch, the number of ELLs, the number of students with disabilities. This can all be found on uh, in New York on the state report card, but this can also be found and you may also want to take a peek at your district or school's website even asking your CT, what is your school known for? Do they have a specific vision or mission statement? How is math structured in that school in particular? Is there something like universal acceleration or tracking? Is there honors or advanced available? And if you teach one of these, you should consider um, and explain how that would affect your teaching. Number four, this section should include any limitations or restrictions. I've had students in previous semesters in my secondary uh, student teaching say that their, their cooperating teacher required them to use district provided materials for a certain course. It was like, here's the packet, this is what you need to use to teach. Um, you would obviously explain that in this section. Additionally, any information about how the curriculum was developed, if there are certain instructional practices being used, if there is small group instruction, is the, if there is uh, intervention services, uh, support staff push-ins, anything to that effect. You also should include any information about standardized tests or year-end assessments. This would include like finals, regents exams, and APs that the students take. But specifically for New York, you cannot mention any identifying state exams. So if you say regents exam, obviously, New York is the only one that gives Regents exams, so instead you should say something about um, state exams, end of year state exams. All right, this section moving forward talks about the name of the course, the length of the course. Again, these are really brief answers. Um, what's the class schedule like? How often is the class switch around? But my fourth prompt is really the most detailed. Is there ability grouping or tracking in math? If so, please. Um, describe how it affects your class. So you have to explain how students were put into your class. Is there just one path of students for mathematics in your school? Do students need to qualify? Is there some kind of criteria for honors or accelerated or AP or IB classes? What if your students qualified for honors but chose not to enroll? Again, think about how those students would be in a typical you know, level uh, math class. How does this affect your class? You could also make a really general statement um, about the diversity of learners in your class. What per, you would say, make a statement about what percentage are classified as ELL or as a student with a disability, um, which is typical for a math class. And then how a general statement about how you support all learners. All right. Number five, again, pretty detailed. Um, it basically asks you for information, but you should also include any other resources that you use on a regular basis or uh, resources that students um, 
use that are provided by the school district. So that could be something like iReady or iXL if your district has a subscription. Uh, number six, resources like electronic uh, whiteboards. Smartboard is actually a brand and should be noted that way. So smart is all capitalized for Smartboard. Um, you can list calculators that the students use, any other tech devices, tablets um, that were provided by the district should also be listed in this section. All right, and now we're getting to the bottom part, number of students, um, grade level composition if you have them, um, if you have a class that has multiple levels of students in your class, also males and females in your class, and then finally this next section, which I do want to preface with, you need to show off what you know. This chart is supposed to summarize needed and required supports, accommodations, and modifications for students with special learning needs. Use this as a tool to demonstrate your ability to support a wide variety of learners that you will see in your classroom. Even though you may not have them, um, it's probably advisable to make sure that you've at least planned to have these types of students in your classroom. So it's a good idea to not leave any of these blank. So let's start with uh, students with disabilities, which would be a student with a 504 um, or an IEP. So these students um, typically out of, if you are a student with a disability, 34% of those students have a specific learning disability. Um, and since that's the most prominent type, you may want to read up on the characteristics of this type of learner and consider how to best support them from here. Um, on the hard copy that I will be providing on my Weebly page, um, it has a link to LD America, which is a website for uh, students with learning disabilities. You also want to list any kinds of accommodations and modifications for that student. Yes, accommodations and modifications are actually different things. I know they sound alike. Um, I do have a video that talks about the difference between them as well as some suggestions. So if you want some ideas on what to fill in in this uh, chart, go to my video on accommodations and modifications students with specific language needs. So we're speaking specifically about students, uh, most likely ELLs on Long Island. They are the fastest growing and most prominent group of learners. Again, um, I will have some additional resources on those, but even uh, former ELLs may require certain types of supports. Um, and that should be included in your counts. Additionally, if you have information about proficiency levels, uh, you might want to note that on this chart if the student is emerging or if the student is, you know, proficient. Um, any supports from staff as well, if there is a push in ELL teacher um, or any other supports, maybe a pullout that that student receives, be sure to include that. Um, this category would also be acceptable to include students who receive speech services. Now this is more typical in a middle school setting. Um, there may still be students in high school that receive services and require consideration when planning your math lessons. Um, again, another video that I might recommend would be the language supports video, which talks about various language supports and some suggestions for implementation. And finally, our last category, students with other learning needs. Now, most often this is a category of students that aren't necessarily documented in any specific way, right? Someone who has ADHD or has a visual impairment obviously would go under IEP or 504. So instead you're considering what is underlying in your classroom. Are there students who struggle to read? Are there students who have behavior needs? Are there students who are gifted and talented or ones that may have qualified for honors and accelerated but did not take it. Um, and those students are going to require modifications as well as fast finishers. So consider that when you're talking about modifications and accommodations. Again, that is going to be in that video as well. So if you're thinking about what am I going to give those students that are fast finishers, that are higher level thinkers, that are you know ready to move on, think about uh, checking out that video on accommodations and modifications. All right, so again, a quick overview of the context for learning for secondary math. My name is Dr. Patricia Kalanicki. I hope you found this video helpful. Looking forward to seeing you soon.